The prayer that you've got to remember. This is a living African queen deified as a goddess. She held the throne and the family together so King Tut's tomb could be found. That's her grandson or younger son. Our deep concepts of recognizing power and spirituality are such that she was deified as a living goddess. We don't have to create the images. The images are there. We need to use the images because whoever controls the images controls the self-esteem, the self-respect, and the self-development. Whoever controls the images controls the self-esteem, the self-respect, and the self-development. And that's why we have to fight so hard for these images. And that's why I'm blessed to be with you in the shrine of the Black Madonna, the mother of the Lord. Give him some love, that's right. Hold on and up. Baba pulled his heart out for us today. One of the most brilliant star warriors that we have right now. Baba. Paco Terrorist. And he has to leave to the airport. Brothers and sisters, as we're clapping for showing your love for our brother. The shrine will be open after this. Please make sure you support the African Bookstore here. Also, I need everyone to give some love to Brother Del Jones. He's here. He's supposed to be here today. Just say everyone. Say, Del Jones! Del we love you! We love you! Brother Del Jones! Del we love you! And support Mama Jones in the back. She's selling her wares in the back, directly behind us. Brothers and sisters, now, the agenda. Now, the agenda. Please be seated, Africans. Please be seated at this time. The agenda. By 2010, Africans, we need thousands of warriors who are ready to take the land. Let me say this again. By the time comes around of 2010, we must have some strong warriors ready to take the land. Thousands of warriors, skilled Africans. The reason why we say 2010, it would be the 110th anniversary of the launching of the Pan-African Movement. Every year, we're gonna have a summit to build up to this 2010 sacred time. Every year. We have proposed at this summit. I didn't want to break my brother's flow, but I would not be respectful if I didn't acknowledge one of the members of the shrine, I think it's Brother Olatunji, who greeted me when I came in and he presented me uh, with a gift, which I will take back to New York, a picture of Dr. John Henry Clark. With all of the books, and what not, uh, that he represents. So this is a memento of this weekend. So thank you, Shrine, uh, for continuing this African love. Give Baba some love again. Thank you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the African continent uh, place immense responsibility on Africans here in the U.S. And in order for us to move forward, we have to ensure that we have Africans who are prepared to go and take the land with our brothers and sisters from the Europeans and European interests in Africa. That means that we have to raise millions of dollars, billions of dollars, to be ready to invest in Africa. Whenever we displace the Europeans and their interests in Africa, the IMF and the World Bank in Africa, that means that we have to replace it with African money. Let me say this again. We have to replace the European finance with African finance. That's right. And in order to do that, we have to develop what we call a development fund for African people. And in that fund, we have to raise millions of dollars. We have to establish a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 15-year plan, a 20-year plan to raise 
billions of dollars so we can invest in the most greatest, wealthiest, sacred space in the whole world. And so the Africans at the summit has proposed for a development fund for Africa. Give them some love for that. Also Africans, at the economic committee, we said every single village, every single African village in every city in the US should have an African market. That means right here in the West End, we more need to move quickly right now to say, how are we going to establish, establish an African market? Whereas African people can say we have a shared interest in the purchasing and investment of something as basic as food for our people. We need to do that, not only here in the West End, but every African village in every city in the African world, starting right here. We're saying, brothers and sisters, that came out of the economic summit, we need to ensure that we have control over our technology. Africa needs technology. They said that we must get the technology for African development. We have access to that technology. Let's use our strength and get that technology for Africa. We have access to this. We also say that we love to be African gods, don't we? That means that we must invest in different type of industries that relates to African textile and clothing, trade and commerce with Africa. Africans, whenever we build a strong political system right here in the US, there's no reason why we should not get whatever oil we need in Africa. That oil belongs to African people right here. That's right. Every single gallon of oil in Africa belongs to us. But the only problem we have right now is that we don't have a political structure, a leadership to say, by the way, that oil belongs to me and I'm going to get some of that oil. That's the only thing we have to do. So we have to prepare ourselves in terms of the skills and the leadership to go in and take the land and take our resources yeah. with our brothers and sisters on the continent. That's the only time we're going to get respect. Last year, the ambassador of Zimbabwe came here and he said, Whatever you want, if you're not organized, you're not going to get it in Africa. If you're not organized, you're not going to get it in Africa. So we're saying that these three things we need to work on. The task force of the economic committee need to work on three things. One, begin to organize a development fund for African people in the world to deal with the health crisis, the education crisis, and the food crisis. Right now we're saying that every African should give at least $10 towards this effort. You hear what I'm saying? At least $10. If you're an organization, we said $100. If you're really serious about Africa, as an individual, we said $25. But we need a development fund for Africa to deal with our food, to deal with education, and to deal with health. Brothers and sisters, at the minimum, we can move forward with that. We also say in Africans that in terms of our culture, in terms of our culture, what we have to do, brothers and sisters, is establish rituals, African rituals that make sense for African people. We have to have a ritual every single week Africans need to meet at some sacred space to need to learn about African heritage every single week. I know the Shrine of the Black Madonna does that right now. Give the Shrine some love for that. Every Saturday they meet right here. We need to have a ritual for that. We need to learn an African language. Right now the African Union has stated that all Africans at minimum begin to learn Kiswahili. If you don't like his Swahili because of his Arab linkage, that's fine. Learn Akan, learn Yoruba, but learn some type of African language. That's what, what, what the Abin Bola said. There are two distinct ways to determine if you are a people or not. A people. One is through your religion, and one is through your language. We don't even know who we are just because of that. Because we have lost an African language, 
the language that we have, and we have lost the core of our religion. So we have to learn some type of language, Africans. Also, what we're saying to Africans is that every African home should have some type of sacred shrine and space. We already have that, for the most part. We have it in our homes. Same place where you put these great ancestors, the family, the pictures. Make a sacred space out of it. See it as such and use it as such. Meditate there. Pray there. Have a libation cup there. Change that libation water every single day. That is a sacred space. We also say in terms of culture that every single African must go home even once in their life. Every single African must go home on a sacred pilgrimage to the homeland. Every single year, Baba James Small and Jeffrey take families home. The other organizations that do that, make sure you go home to your motherland, even once in your lifetime. In terms of politics, we left the summit saying that we're going to establish elders. Reinforce the elders that we have as part of this Pan-African Movement Summit. So we have Mama Silver Claw. We have Dr. Leonard Jeffries. We have Mama Keffer. Most of you don't know Mama Keffer. She's the one who nurtured Dr. Ben and Clark in New York. Every week I'm on the phone with her. Great mother, Queen Mother. Give some love to Queen Mother, Mama Keffer. All the major leaders and scholars and warriors who have been here for decades working for us, we're going to have them as the elders of this summit. We're asking also Africans that from every single state, we need at least two representatives in this summit. Two from every single state in this summit. We're also asking that we're going to cut up the U.S. into grids. All across the U.S., in grids, with leadership over that, those grids, all across the U.S. Then we're going to cut up the state, each state into grid, and have leaders over all those grids. We're going to cut up every single city in grids, and have leaders over it. Every single block, every single house. That's what we're going to do in the U.S. in order to move towards integrating with Africa. That's what we're going to do here politically. We said also that we're going to establish May as African Liberation Month. Not just African Liberation Day, African Liberation Month. And it's going to be a month of action for African people. We want the schools to be open up where Africans can, like ourselves, can go in and begin to train our people how to be Africans. And you know what? It's going to be done. With the type of leaders that we have, all we have to do is get some type of letter of support from the leadership in Africa, and you go to any school and say, this day is supposed to be Africa Day, African Liberation Day in your school. And the door is open. And we're going to get those type of letters. We're saying also during African Liberation Month, we're going to have festivals to make sure that our children are culturally connected to African experience, to the sacred experience. One thing about children is that they love some festival. So we're going to make May a time that we can have festival. Brother Kofi is going to be working with all the different organizations right in the West End. Are we going to just cut off this boulevard right here, right in front of the shrine? Just take it over. That's it. From block to block, just take it over and make it a space for African festival. Let's do it. We're saying also that there's some critical issues that we need to deal with all across the US to make sure our people are educated about Africa. The situation of Zimbabwe. That information must get to our people. Zimbabwe is at the front line for Af all African people in the world today. Rick, what Kwame Kuma and Patrice Lumumba was doing for us is where Zimbabwe is right now in Mugabe. That's right. That's right. We have to raise an army to support yes. Mugabe. Come on now. The Namibian president said, if anyone tried to touch Zimbabwe, all Africans will rise up against them. Yes. That's what the Namibian president
been said. We have to say right here too, if anybody mess with Zimbabwe, we're gonna rise up against them. We have to raise an African army right here. And we're saying, brothers and sisters, that the issue of that war, that mess has to stop. And we're gonna send our Arab brothers who look just like us a strong message here from the US. No compromise. No compromise. They think it's another holy day to go and attack those who are traditionally African. It must be stopped, and the message must be clear right here from the United States of, of, the, of imperialism. We are also saying, brothers and sisters, in politics, that the issue of the Congo must be dealt with. The issue of the Congo must be raised. We also must be educating our people about what happened in the Gulf Coast region of the US. The situation of Haiti. They do everything to reduce Haiti. Yeah. Everything, because if Haiti is raised up, Africans here, in no time, will rebel against this government and build our own, like we have tried to do over and over again, right here in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, Haiti will send some generals over here to help out, like they did when they sent generals to Simon Bolivar to liberate Latin America. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we've seen also in politics that in July, we need to have also an in-gathering in July, around the 23rd to the 25th of every year, during African Pan-African Month, the period where we launched the Pan-African Movement over 106 years ago, July 23rd, 25th. And we're going to have a pilgrimage to Africa during that time. And we ask the African leaders who are among us to go home during that time and link up with the leadership in Africa. You hear what I'm saying? We should be able to send it out to Jeffries, the Molefi Asante, to almost any major meeting in Africa and create our own meetings in Africa to deal with our own issues right here in America. Brothers and sisters, we are also saying that we need some serious Africans who are willing to go home and do serious work in Africa. We have to repatriate the brain that has been drained from the continent. 500 years ago, 400 years ago, 300 years ago, we were drained from the continent. The brain was drained. We have to make sure that it is returned to the continent. And we're saying that the month of May, the month of July, or any other time that we must use to put forward an agenda to get our people back in Africa to help rebuild the continent. Brothers and sisters, We are also saying that we have different type of organizations that are doing similar work around unifying African people. And we must be able to send delegates, leaders, to these different meetings going on. Because the worst thing we can do politically is to begin to wage war and compete against something that is so great for us. And so we're reaching out to all the different organizations who are doing the, this type of Pan-African work. And we're saying to them that if you're in Europe, we're gonna reach out to you. We're gonna send delegates to the meetings. If you're in Latin America, we're gonna send delegates to the meeting. If you're in the Caribbean, we're gonna send delegates to the meeting. If you're in Asia, we're gonna send delegates to the meeting. So we can be one in terms of building the sixth region of Africa. And when we all come together, hopefully before 2010, hopefully next year, we can say to the leadership, one of us, one of you, will go and represent African people in the sixth region in Africa, representing the issues that face African people in the US also. This is serious. 
Because if we have somebody from Latin America who is not in touch with what's going on, the reality of Africans in the US, that means that they're going to misrepresent us in Africa. So we have to connect with all these forces. We have a whole lot of work to do compared to the first region, the second region, the third, the fourth, and the fifth across the continent. They're in East Africa, West Africa, Southern, North, and Central. We have to go all over the world to put this region together. It's immense work. But it must be done. This is what the ancestors have called for, and so it's a mandate, and it will be done by us in this generation. Now. As you leave here, brothers and sisters, Please go to the website of the African Union. Study about the African Union. Study about the Pan-African Congresses. Study about the Pan-African Movement. All the names that pop up, the key ones, go in and keep plug in their names and study them. Because the more you study them, the more you become like them. The more you study Nkuma, the more you want to be like Kwame Nkuma. The more you study, Seiko Ture, the more you want to be like Seiko Ture. The more you study Amy Garvey, the more you want to be like Amy Garvey. And believe me, Amy Garvey was one of the most powerful sisters in our history. She brought it together, the Pan-African Congress, the fifth Pan-African Congress, because W.B. Du Bois said, I've done wrong to your husband, Marcus Garvey. The only way we're going to be unified is coming together, Amy and W.E.B. Du Bois as one African force for African people. Yes. And they came together at the 5th Pan-African Congress in Manchester, England to launch up this great and noble work that we're involved in today. And if they can come together after what W.E.B. Du Bois has done to the great Marcus Garvey, then we can come together and make it work as African people anytime, any place, anywhere. There's great work to be done. But as Marcus Garvey said, every obstacle is a ladder to greatness. And as Kwame Ture always said to us, the more you struggle, the easier struggle becomes. So if you want to struggle, Africans, get in the water and learn to swim. Get in the water and learn to swim. Don't just look at the water and say the water looks good, Pan-Africanism looks good. Jump in Pan-Africanism and let it work for us. African people, let us build Africa, one Africa. African people, rise up, stand up, stand up, African people. Let us work and build a new African people and a world community for Africans. Those who are serious, See you next week, this coming Wednesday, at 6 o'clock at ITC, or 4 o'clock next week Sunday. This coming Wednesday, we're going to have a debrief of what happens so we won't make the mistakes again. Kwame Tour said we must be scientific in whatever we do. Next week Sunday, again, we meet again, and we're going to begin to plan the summit for next year. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're going to be planning for what's going to happen in May. We're going to be planning for every single major organized, organized effort that's going on for Pan-Africanism and make sure that we are involved in the Pan-African noble struggle. Africans, ready for the African Revolution. Ready for the African Revolution. That's right. That's it, Africans. Give yourself some love. At this time, Africans, please make a circle. Make a quick circle. The shrine, the bookstore is open. And again, please make a circle, Africans. Please make a circle. Let us make a circle. Make the circle, Please join the African cycle. No spectators.
spectatorship anymore. You are either with us or you are against us. We are all familiar with that um, rhetoric. You are either with us or you are not, and you are against us. Anytime we meet, nobody should sit in the back and observe what is going on. Bring your minds and ideas together on the table so that we all can come up with you know, strategies and plans of how to move forward together. Father Shay. At this time, we would like an elder to please send us forth to do good work for our people. Any other would like to send us forth? Any other? Especially one who have not had any major contribution. An elder. I see the great Garvey I told you. Any other, please. Thank you, the others. I would like to do the best that I can. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. On to the purpose that we all about. As an elder. Thank you, dear Ethel. Thank you. Let us pray after. In the name of Untu Kulunkulu. our creator ancestor. In the name of Mulungu, our creator that bestowed upon us that we are a microcosm of the whole universe. In the name of or the mare, that we are a loving and merciful and kind people. In the name of Unyame, that we are a powerful people. In the name of Yah. Ja, Allah, we say thank you. In the name of our great ancestors, those who came before us and sacrificed.